Hello. <laughs> I would like to take this moment to thank, and it's even on my PowerPoint, <laughs> um, I would like to thank my advisor, Stephen McAlpine, and Temple Crocker, and Steve Bradley, who's not here right now. I really, um, I benefited immensely from our extended, extensive conversations that I gained so many insights from, and I truly, truly appreciate that. And um, thank you. And so, and this is Temple, you all must see. Um, thanks to my friend Avery for being here, and for all of you for, and um, thank you for the INDS department has been so supportive. Um, Right here we have Lisa Vitter and I don't know if <laughs> we, you know, pointing things out is nice. Janet Goetz, who has been Carrie Souter right here, and Patricia Lanou have, there's just been this enthusiasm just entering that part of the building. You feel like people are inquisitive and wondering how you're doing and just exude encouragement. It's wonderful. It's a very magical place. Okay. So. This is my attention getter, <laughs> and I'm supposed to start with an attention getter, but I'm not supposed to say that. <laughs> or, <laughs> did I get your attention? Because that's what performance artists do. Um, a lot of the time they're trying to get your attention to point out, um, in this case I'm kind of showing you what's behind the scenes, what's supposed to be behind the scenes, and that brings attention to what we think of as normal. What what, we, what is invisible in what we take for granted in the structure of everyday life. That's one of the jobs of performance art. And um, giving a presentation like many of you will be doing is a lot like performance art. And um, a lot of life, a lot of everyday life is very performative. And now I will <laughs> show my main purpose, which is I wrote and directed a piece um, and performed a piece called The Artist Statement. And an artist statement is something that artists are expected to produce regularly when they submit work. Sometimes it's a paragraph, sometimes it's a few pages, and it's supposed to describe your purpose of art making and the essence of your work, which I've spoken to a lot of artists, and it's an intimidating prospect for many of us. So. Um, my, um, also I researched performance art. What is performance art? I did a um, review of history and of different performance artists that I consider um, that resonate with my work. Um, so my literature review, Rosalie Goldberg has written an amazing, sort of the Bible of performance art history. and. Um, she starts, it's called From Futurism to the Present, and she starts with Futurists, um, Constructivists, uh, Dada, and Surrealism. And she points out how all of these movements at the, at the beginning, as they're really developing their aesthetic, are using a lot of performance, not what we consider today as performance art, but the very beginnings of that. And it's sort of at the forefront of the avant-garde movements. It helped with the experimentation to develop their movement. Um, I, I read about so many performance artists. I wish I could talk about many of them, but I will um, mention one of my favorites is Linda Montano, who did a performance with Dirching Shea, where they tied a rope, a 10-foot long rope, to each other and performed for a year um, tied to each other. They never untied themselves and they never touched And in New York City. So they went around the city and they were a spectacle in that way and it's interesting to me also because of the interrelation of how they had to um, just deal with each other on every single minute and the immersion of that really appeals to me because I uh, love the idea of making art every second for an entire year. You're in a piece. You, there's no escaping it. So um, I kind of associate with that um, part of the artist statement was writing 
hundreds and hundreds of pages with magic marker and posting them on the walls of my room. And this is just one little bit of it that is on the floor and just the immersion of that. Another performance artist that I'm really uh, uh, drawn to is Miranda July, who is very contemporary. She does a lot of film and video now, but her performance work um, includes pieces um, that are that resonate with me because they're very um, narrative. She's on stage. She's um, telling stories and using poetic language and video. Oh, there's a lot of great exhibits, but I can't go into them with my time. Um, but a great year for performance art in museums. Um, methodologies. I also for the piece that I wrote and directed, I rewrote the piece itself many times. I had the opportunity to perform twice. Uh, solo, the first scene and the last scene, I got to do individual performance months and months before the actual full performance, which was a great opportunity for me to work through some of the glitches of those and then add the middle all the, con the content. Um, so in uh, as we were brainstorming and talking about the art statement one day, me and Stephen um, McAlpin were had the idea that wouldn't it be great if you wrote a piece and performed in the artist statement and it was a real showstopper um, when we performed in the amphitheater he sang a song about stage fright and the entire audience formed a chorus and did a kick line it was fantastic and so um, I part of my process also Emily Kimmack I invited her to do a choreographed piece as part of the show because a lot of my work has included other artists, um, sort of a platform for other artists. Um, the process of adding actors, I did most of the rehearsing for this piece um, on my own. It was the, the bulk of the language is done by me and then in the last couple of weeks I well before that we had started rehearsing the dance and then we incorporated the actors into the show. So the disciplinary perspectives, um, performance art is the overarching dis um, discipline that I <laughs> use to define this piece. Um, it is interdisciplinary in itself because theater, dance, creative writing, video, these all can be freely used as part of performance art. And um, I studied and worked with all of these um, women's studies, political science, psychology, philosophy, now these things inform um, a lot of the decisions made, and which brings me to the bridging strategies. The second one is the bridging the explanation action gap. And when I, were, um, when I worked in different artist communities in different cities I've lived in, um, it would always bother me when I noticed that they were very male dominated in certain circumstances, very males often had the loudest voice and were paid the most attention to um, and got the most attention. So I um, was, motiv that would motivate me to, to get on stage and be more outspoken. Um, and so that's the action from the politics that surrounded it. Also, the psychology of interrelations I'm very interested in and performing dialogues that kind of uh, illustrate some of the psychology that is in everyday conversation and the poetry of that. Um, so perfader is kind of a compound concept that it's kind of a funny word. I really think people get hung up on the idea of is it performance art or is it theater? Because actually with experimental theater, with narrative performance art, there's there's a lot of crossover. The artist statement you could you could call it a theater piece with performance art elements if you want to. I think it's really in the intention of the performer. So um, I performance art often challenges expectations. And I feel like this piece challenged a lot of expectations. First of all, just in the fact that for my artist statement, I did a performance. And an artist statement, as I mentioned, is a written statement, an academic type statement. Um, and I, the audience in the course of, well also that I 
instead of doing a condensed statement, I did hundreds and hundreds of pages with Magic Marker. Um, so that is defying expectations of a of a artist statement. Um, audience, um, when we performed this, we performed in the amphitheater when it didn't rain. We performed in the dance studio when it did, um, and. Um, the audience came down. This was one of the first things we talked about when I started discussing this idea. Um, the audience came down at one point and took the place where the performers were performing and the audience um, got to watch the performers where they had been sitting and the sunset was happening behind them. And so that, you know, flipping just makes the audience notice where you know, the perspective has shifted. And then the entire audience went on a parade around the pond and Stephen's drum circle or drum group was playing and so they became the spectacle instead of um, being spectators. So again, it's shifted. Um, so this is actually a typo, it's mega joy, but it's supposed to reference the idea of meta joy. There's a lot of meta work that I do um, in my performance work and in the course of Artist Statement, I showed a video clip of a lot of different um, performances, at different levels of performance. In um, There's me talking to a video camera, me on a stage with a video camera, me in a play. You know, there was many levels collaged together within the video clip and then I took a character discussing that. So, um, speaking of meta, the idea of meta <laughs> well, <laughs> that is a surprise. I thought it was really, I didn't notice the, um, hmm, okay. Well, maybe I won't do the, maybe I'll just jump to my conclusions. I was going to do a little bit of the performance that is in the last, can I, um, We need to go to wrap? questions. Oh, okay. To, so when, when it's stop time, it's time to stop. Okay. So if, um, perhaps the audience has some questions about where you're going. That will be about my conclusion. <laughs> so, uh, questions from the audience. Um, you, you talked a little bit about Rose, Rosalie Goldberg, that sort of was the Bible. In, in the other works that you read, who else would you say, like what significantly uh, impacted you? Um, in doing this research, like who for? Um, okay, so Dirching Shea was the artist I mentioned um, that tied himself with the rope to Melinda Montano. He also had, um, he also, I have this huge book of his life works, and he did a series of um, performances. Um, and one of the things he said in one of the essays that really struck me was that he chose to do, like he did a performance where he punched a time clock every hour on the hour for a year. So he didn't sleep more than, you know, 40 minutes, any, or, you know, 55 minutes, I suppose. Um, but he skipped a few in the course of the year. He has, in the book, it has photographs, every single photograph. And you see a few where he missed it. But and he said that what motivated him to do that was that he was thinking about performance. Well, thinking about art, thinking about what art is, and just taking a year, and that is that was his motivation. And I just really love the idea of the thought of art being the making of art. Um, and um, other, you know, just a slew of, it was great reading about Marina Abramovich. I got to see her, um, it was the first ever solo exhibition at the MoMA of performance art. So I got to I know her more. And once I see somebody do something, it's like a personal connection, especially a performer because it's live. And um, she was there staring, you know, she did 700 hours sitting there. These are very durational performers, sitting there staring at, you know, person after person who would come and meditate with her in the middle of this huge circle of light. It was incredible, it was incredible. And um, then they reenacted a lot. Um, so um, that that hands-on research I really appreciate. I got to see an exhibit of um, Joan, Joan Jonas at the Philadelphia Fabric Workshop, and I got a book um, about different works of hers. Um, and yeah, a lot of, well, um, there's a book, well, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> 
um, that I especially like that Praminda actually suggested to me, which is um, Gomez Pena, and he, it's, um, I'm involved in a performance, this is my way, my way to sneak in, that I'm involved in a performance this weekend um, that's an extension of the artist statement, which is a series of 20 um, installations all in a row, and you go through each one, and each has a little performance in it, and each one is an environment, um, and so I, I'm using that for artist statement, but um, Gomez Pena talks a lot about immigration issues, and that's one of the themes of this performance this weekend at the Current Gallery. Yeah. We, we're going to have to wrap up because it's already 12:33. But if you could briefly, in like 30 seconds, this is a huge question, so this is hard. But uh, you mentioned that a lot of the intention of your work is meta. Yeah. And this is also a word that comes up in interdisciplinary studies. Yeah. But it would be really helpful if you could briefly explain what do you mean by your approach being a meta approach to oh. theater or to performance? Yeah. Well, it's work that's about the work itself. It's very. It's actually a simple concept, um, although it branches into many complications. Yeah. Um, meta work in film when you see the camera. You know, Vertov was very huge in filmmaking for exposing the act of making film in the film itself. And Brecht was very huge in theater for political reasons. He showed um, the act of making theater. So it, it takes power away from the performer and gives power to the audience. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, bringing attention to structure is a huge concept in postmodernism, feminism. Like things aren't just the way they are because that's the way they should be. They're all constructed. And so that's. Meta is a way of pointing that out. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.